Hello. Today I want to talk to you about trailing stops and I'll show you how to write a function for trailing stops. If you're not familiar with them, trailing stops follow the price in the direction of your trade, maintaining some kind of distance behind, and they're intended to be a way to guard against losing in case of a price reversal. MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 both have a trailing stop function built in that you can set trade by trade, but if you want to apply those to an expert advisor, you'll need to write some functions so that the expert automatically applies this when you create new trades. There are, of course, variations to the way you can apply trailing stops. Today, I'm just going to look at the standard or vanilla trailing stop, which is set by a certain number of points away from the price and only applies when that trailing stop is better than the original opening price. So uh, for a buy trade, only if the trailing stop is higher than the entry price or for a sell trade, only if the trailing stop is lower than the entry price. This video is for MetaTrader 5. There is a separate video for MetaTrader 4 and I'll put a link in the description and on screen somewhere for that. So now let's get into the code and see how this works. So I have MetaTrader 5 open here. I'm just going to go into the MetaTrader editor, click this icon, Meta and the editor opens. In the experts folder, I already have a folder called Orchard. I'm going to create a folder inside this for trailing stop. And then I'm going to go new file, expert advisor. Trailing stop, next. I don't need on timer, on chart event, on book event, on trade transaction, on trade, on tester, on tester init. Don't need any of those. Now this is the template that's been created by the wizard. I'm just going to replace the comment block at the beginning first, just because I like it to look a little neater. Now I've just documented the rules of my trailing stop here. It's very simple. I'm only applying this trailing stop if the trailing stop or the stop loss that will be applied is better than the opening price. So if it's a sell, then lower than the opening price, and if it's a buy, then higher than the opening price. And I'm also only going to apply the trailing stop if it's better than the current, I've said current trailing stop, but it's actually the current stop loss. So it will only ever get better in the direction of the trade. I'm going to be trading. So I'm going to include the trade class. So that's hash include angle bracket trade slash trade dot MQH. This is included with MetaTrader 5 and it just wraps up a number of trading functions for you. Uh, and that allows me access to a class called ctrade. So then I'm declaring a variable of type ctrade. I'm just calling that trade and I can use that then throughout the expert. Next, this is a simple trailing stop based on a points distance from the price. So I have an input for the number of trailing stop points. So input int, imp trailing stop points and my default value here is 500. And next, this is about a function to apply a trailing stop, but I can't really apply a trailing stop without trades. So I'm just going to get some inputs that will allow me to create some trades. And these are the standard inputs that I would always have a magic number, a trade comment and a trade volume. And I'll use those later when I create the trades, but the trades are really only there to apply the trailing stop. There is no strategy to opening these trades. And then because I've entered the trailing stop in points, but I actually need it to be in price value. I've got a double value here called stop loss, and I'll be calculating that as the double value that's associated with these points. So in the on init section, first thing I'm doing is calculating that stop loss value. I'm using symbol info double, passing in the current chart symbol and the argument symbol underscore point. That gives me the size of one point for this symbol. And I multiply that then by the input trailing stop points. And that gives me a stop loss in price. And then the next line, when I use the trade object and I'm going to create some trades, I need to set the magic number before I use that. I only need to set it once because I'm not changing the magic number throughout the expert. So I'm doing it here in the on init section 
with the trade.set expert magic number. Then when I ask the trade object to open a new trade, it will open it with that magic number for me. This is again not part of the trailing stop, but I need to do this to create some trades so that I can apply a trailing stop. The on DNet section, I have nothing to do in on DNet. The trade object, if you're wondering, this doesn't have the asterisk in front of it, it's not a pointer to an object. So because this is just declared as a variable object, it will automatically be destroyed when the expert finishes. So I don't need to delete it here. Then in the on tick section, instead of putting all of the code in here to handle the trailing stop, I'm actually just going to put calls to functions and those functions then will be more generally useful because you can put them in other places, say in a function library and use them in other experts. The first one though is just the create trades. I need some trades, I'm just putting a function in here, I'll show this in a moment. It's a very simple function that will just place trades if I don't already have any. And then the other call is to apply trailing stop. In both of these calls, I'm passing in all of the values that the function needs. Even though the volume, magic number, trade comment, stop loss, and even the symbol are globally available, it's better practice to write the functions to take inputs rather than rely on that global variable. Because then if you do put these functions inside a function library and you want to use it with some other value than these named global variables, it will still work. So this makes the functions more generally useful. So first, let's look at the create trades function. I won't spend a lot of time on that. It's just there to create a couple of trades. So the arguments to that, the symbol, volume, magic number, and the trade comment. First thing I'm doing is creating two variables, a buy count and a sell count, because I just want to know how many trades I have of the type buy or sell. And I'm saying count is equal to the positions total. And then I'm counting backwards for int i equals count minus one, as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. Now, if you have seen the earlier video on applying a default stop loss, there was an error in that video. I actually put a uint here. I copied it from somewhere else and not noticed it. This needs to be an int. If you put a uint here, this will create an infinite loop. So for int i equals count minus one, i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. And then I need to grab the ticket number with this position get ticket, and that loads that position into memory so that I can then work on that position. And then I'm saying if the ticket is greater than zero, then I'm checking the symbol with the position get string position symbol, that gives me the symbol for this position. If that is equal to the symbol that's been passed in, and using position get integer, passing in position underscore magic to see if it matches the magic number. If those two match, then this trade has been placed by this expert and for this symbol. And then I can simply increment the buy count or the sell count. So if position get integer of position underscore type returns buy, then I'll increment the buy count. And if it returns sell, then I'll order the sell, then I'll increment the sell count. So all this block is doing is counting how many trades I have of type buy or sell. Because all I want to do down here is say, if I don't have any buy trades, I'm going to create one. And if I don't have any sell trades, I'm going to create one. I'm doing that with the trade.position open function, passing in the symbol, and it's either an order type buy, passing in my trade volume, and then I'm calculating here the open price. So if it's a buy then I'm opening at the ask price and I get that with symbol info double passing symbol and symbol underscore ask I'm not worried about stop loss and take profit and just passing in the trade comment and remember that the magic number was set earlier on the trade object and the open for a sell is exactly the same I've just replaced the order type with order type sell and the price with the symbol info double for symbol underscore bid so that entire function will just make sure that I have at least one buy or sell trade. So now let's look at the apply trailing stop because that's what this is all about. So first in apply trailing stop, it's passing in the symbol, the magic number and the stop loss. This is the stop loss distance. 
I need to know how many digits are applicable to this symbol. So how many decimal places this symbol runs to. Uh, and I can get that with the symbol info integer function, passing in the symbol and the argument of symbol underscore digits. And I'm casting that to an integer with the bracket int close bracket. And this is a static because this value for digits won't change while this expert is running. So I don't really need to calculate it every time I go into this function. I only need to calculate it once. So by making that a static, it will perform this function once and then simply remember that value from then on. And then I actually want to know the price that's applicable then for a buy stop loss or a sell stop loss. So I've been passed in the size of the stop loss. I need to convert that to a price. Now I can do that with symbol info double. And for a buy, I'm getting the symbol underscore bid because this is the close price for a buy. For the sell, I'm using the symbol underscore ask because that's close price for a sell. So first thing I'm getting is the close price for the trade. And then for a buy, I'm subtracting stop loss, calculating a price below. And for a sell, I'm adding stop loss, so calculating a price above. And then I'm putting both of those through the normalized double function with the number of digits, just to make sure that they're valid prices. So next, I need to loop through all of the positions that I have. So I've calculated the two buy and sell stop loss prices, done that once at the beginning. I'm going to loop through all the positions. First thing I grab is a variable I'm calling count, and that's the positions total, positions total bracket bracket. Then I'm counting down exactly the same loop that I had in create trades for int i equals count minus one. As long as i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. I'm getting the ticket back with the position get ticket. And I'm checking to see that that ticket is greater than zero, which means that I was successful in getting that ticket and in loading this position into memory. So then I need to make sure this is a position that was created by this expert advisor. So I'm checking position get string using position underscore symbol equals symbol. So that's for the correct symbol. And if position get integer position underscore magic is the magic number, then it's been placed by this expert advisor on this symbol. So if those conditions are met, then I can go into applying trailing stops. Just wrap that around so it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. Then if this is so, so then I'm calculating position get integer type because buy and sell have different stop loss prices. So if it's a position type buy and the buy stop loss is greater than the open price and I get the open price with position get double position price open. So if my buy stop loss is greater than that, which means I'm never going to set the buy stop loss below the original opening price. It will only appear once that stop loss goes past the opening price. And then the final part of the condition using position get double position underscore SL. This is the current stop loss for the position. If that is equal to zero or so it's double vertical line or the new calculated buy stop loss is greater than the current stop loss for the position. So I'm only applying a new stop loss if it's better than, so in a buy, better is higher than the existing stop loss. If that's true, then I'm calling the trade.positionModify function, passing in the ticket, the buy stop loss price, and I'm also passing in the current take profit for that position with the position get double, position underscore TP. For a sell, almost the same. The only difference here, I'm checking to see if it's a position type sell, and I'm asking for a stop loss to be less than the open price for the position and for the sell stop loss to be less than the current stop loss for that position. So really just reversing the signs because we're going in the opposite direction for a sell. And then I'm using the same trade.positionModify ticket, but this time the sell stop loss price, and I'm still passing in the existing take profit just in case it exists. Just check that that compiles. It does. And that's everything for the expert advisor for MetaTrader 5. Remember, this is all about applying that 
trailing stop. Uh, the actual order placement is just there so that I have some orders for this function. Hope you found this useful. If you have, then please click the like because that helps us with our channel. And if you'd like to see more of our videos, click subscribe. And then if you click the bell icon, you'll actually be notified when we release a new video. So until next time, thank you for watching.